Today, I'll talk about an alternative to the App Store on Android called F-Droid, which is an app store for free and open source software, FOSS. No, you cannot find this on the Google Play Store because it competes with Google Play, so it's not allowed on there. But if you only use F-Droid as your app store and nothing else, it can potentially make your phone as safe as a Linux phone running on Android. I say potentially because nothing is ever so simple when it comes to privacy. Someone is always out there trying to get your data. So let's start explaining what F-Droid is about coming up. Yes, we are talking about F-Droid, an alternate app store for your Android. But let's start with a caveat. Using F-Droid on a Google Android is useful in the sense that you can have apps you can install, but it doesn't eliminate Google from the device. The problem is that once a phone gets installed with GAPS, Google Apps and Services, it cannot be undone. Various things like Wi-Fi scanning, which tracks your location 24-7, app telemetry reporting, Firebase services and messaging, actually replace existing programs built into the original Android Open Source Project, or AOSP. Likely the latest update from GAPS for your Android has COVID-19 contact tracing built in, which is more spying. So the best solution is always to start with a phone with an AOSP that has no gaps, meaning your Android phone that you got from the store is not going to cut it. It has to be de-Googled. I get asked this all the time, so I just want to be clear with what I know. So the starting point is always an AOSP like Lineage OS without gaps, not your standard Google Android. If you install an AOSP on your phone or have me install it for you, the phone starts out with no app store. In my last video, I talked about installing F-Droid and then about installing a spoofed Google Play Store called Aurora Play Store. Today we will skip Aurora. We will discuss what will happen to your phone if you only use F-Droid. To install F-Droid on your Android AOSP phone, if it's not already there, just go to fdroid.org. Download the F-Droid app, which will be an APK file. Then you just have to tap on it on your downloads folder and you will be able to install it. F-Droid is an interesting project. It doesn't work like Google Play Store at all. If you're publishing apps on Google Play, no one actually reviews your app. Mostly it's based on reputation. If after the fact an app is detected to be introducing malware or doing things that are not allowed by the Google Terms of Service, then Google will delete your app after the fact. But for the most part, you submit a completed app to Google Play and it gets published. F-Droid is a completely different animal. In fact, it's even more restrictive than the Apple App Store. Apple reviews every app and it also reviews every update. But F-Droid takes it a step further. You have to submit your source code to F-Droid itself, meaning human readable programming language form. Then F-Droid uses its own systems to actually build the binary code, which in the case of Android app is a DEX file, which are Java instructions called bytecode. F-Droid can verify what your program is doing during the review process and can see your source code exactly. I hear that the review process is actually long, which I can understand since we have F-Droid volunteers doing this during their free time. What F-Droid verifies specifically is that each program is free and open source, meaning released with a JPL license. And it also verifies that the entirety of the source code is provided to them. If a program relies on external binary programs that have to be downloaded from a third party, like drivers for example, it cannot be included. If a program uses libraries belonging to another party that is not free and open source, like a Google service, then it cannot be approved. An example of Google services are notifications, Google Maps, 
and location services. This is easily verified by F-Droid because they have to actually build the binaries from the source code themselves. What this means is that any app that has notifications using Google notifications, for example, cannot be approved in F-Droid. This is one of the reasons that apps like Signal, though supposedly open source, are not supported in F-Droid. I guess they could do it by removing the notifications. F-Droid also puts out a ton of warning messages about what it calls anti-features. Anti-features doesn't seem to make sense when they actually mean anti-privacy features. Maybe it's a Brit thing. In any case, they flag apps that have ads, use non-free networks, tracking, non-free add-ons, non-free dependencies, non-free assets, known security vulnerabilities, and not having source code. F-Droid was founded by Sierran Gultnix in 2010, who is from the UK. Looking at the list of contributors, I would guess that many of the people are from the EU and probably were interested in being anti-Google. There are actually two sides to what F-Droid does. There's the F-Droid Store app that you can load on your Android device, but that gets data from the F-Droid servers, which actually manage the building of the app. And they have mirrors in various continents since I imagine they don't have a lot of resources. So they rely on other entities volunteering to mirror their F-Droid servers. Anyway, based on what I just said about what F-Droid does, it actually does a more detailed check of each app and the safety of each app than what is done by iOS or Android. This doesn't mean the apps are restricted in any way. In fact, there's a lot of rooting apps and security apps and things that allow you to get deep into Android. But as long as your privacy is maintained and the source code is open, then it is expected that there are no tricks being done by software developers. Because of this, F-Droid apps are really going to end up to be safer overall than that on any other app store because the F-Droid people can examine the source code if some app is doing something it should not. It also makes it difficult to submit an app to F-Droid. For example, I have an app, Braxme, which is in the Google Play Store. It's also on Ubuntu Touch Linux Open Store. You can just download the APK from my site without Google Play. However, I don't really know if I can submit it to F-Droid because it's mostly a web app. Most of the app resides on a host server. My app is free and open source, but they can't compile all of it on their platform, so I don't know how web apps are treated. Maybe someone from F-Droid can tell me, because I'd love to be there. In any case, let's analyze what happens if you're running AOSP on your phone and you use only F-Droid. What can we expect? Well, assuming there's no gaps on the phone, frankly, it shouldn't be different than a Linux phone installed on an Android phone. For example, we can compare it to a Nexus 5 running Ubuntu Touch. Ubuntu Touch has a similar store. The apps are free and open source as well. In theory, the maintainers of the Ubuntu Touch open store could look at the source code since all the apps will be on a GitHub or other public server but they can't compile the code in binary. They don't have the staff for that. F-Droid's process is automated. The building of binaries from source code is done in batch and after review, it is automated. Ubuntu Touch will not send any data to Google. F-Droid apps will not be sending data to Google. Check. Ubuntu Touch will have no app telemetry going to Google. F-Droid apps will have also no telemetry going to Google and have been verified by their build process. Check. Ubuntu Touch has limited ability to do notifications. F-Droid apps are the same, same problem. Ubuntu Touch on an Android phone like a Nexus 5 has binary blobs from the Android OEM. The degoogled phone will also have the binary blob from the Android OEM if you're using F-Droid, same problem. So as long as you stop at F-Droid apps, an AOSP running without gaps is actually a fairly safe phone with the only ones with hardware switches being safer like a Librem 5 or a Pine phone. So those devices have a little bit of an advantage because you can turn off the things that impact 
the Android OEM side, the binary blobs. But for sheer usability, the D Google phone wins hands down with F-Droid. Here are the reasons. First, D Google phones are usually newer models, so they are faster devices. You can, if you want, load some Google Play Store apps using Aurora Store. Again, this is an optional step and would be a security downgrade, but at least you can. Actually, if you turn off the features in Micro G, if that's built in, which is the Google services spoofer, then even Google Play Store apps would be pretty safe as long as the apps continue to function. So definitely, this is a good solution, and F-Droid is a fantastic resource for the privacy-minded. Now, F-Droid apps are limited. For example, they have only around 2,000 plus apps on their store, which is not bad. I've settled on a few apps myself from there for functionality on my AOSB phone, but it would be great if people left suggestions in the comments about really good apps that they found from F-Droid. I'd like to learn. Discovery of good apps is not easy on there, so a community searching around and trying things might be a good thing. I'll set up a community on Braxme to discuss F-Droid apps. I can't try every app, so I'm sure I'm missing some good ones. I do offer de-Google phones in my store, or I can de-Google them for you, but it has to be something I've already learned to do. Usually when I deliver a phone, I install Braxme and Signal. Look at the description in my store, which is the link rob.brax.me. Again, to be clear, the only Google services that Braxme and Signal uses are notifications. So if you go into Google Cloud Messaging in Micro G and turn off Google Cloud Messaging, nothing will be sent to Google. Usually I stop there and I don't install anything else from the Aurora store. At least I vetted these two apps. Obviously, Braxme is my app. I usually must have a Kindle on my phone, so that I do have to get from the Aurora store. So I, for me, I can't just do F-Droid. Here are my usual go-to apps on F-Droid. I use Forecasty for weather, OpenVPN, NetGuard, Orbot, Newpipe, which is a YouTube client, LibreOffice Viewer, K9 Email, and Open Keychain, that's kind of a pair. And then the Aurora Play Store, and this is the best one, Osmand, Open Street Maps. It's actually a pretty good substitute for Google Maps. I'd like to build on this list with good suggestions from this community. There's a forum on the fdroid.org site where they discuss some specific apps or discuss problems with apps. Looks like the developers of the apps themselves go there to provide tech support services as well for their own apps. Anyway, I really love this project. These guys from fdroid and the app developers who make free and open source apps are doing a great service, allowing us to have some privacy. Support them and pass the word. If you have enjoyed this series of videos on the Google phones, please subscribe to this channel. I do have regular videos at least twice a week and sometimes more, so you will enjoy it more if you hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching.